Good morning, students. Myself, Dr. Pooja Yadav, and we are studying Just a moment, I'll share my screen and then we will start. Okay, so uh, very good morning to you all. Myself, Dr. Pooja Yado, and we were studying uh, operational amplifiers and its applications. So what are OPAMs? What are operational amplifiers? We have already seen the introduction of uh, operational amplifiers. Then we have seen the block diagram of uh, OPAMP. You might be remembering this all, but, but we will just have a recall recap of this and then we will start with the subtractor. So what are operational amplifiers? How they are different from uh, general amplifiers and electronic circuits? All these things we have already seen, okay? And then we have also seen what are the parameters of operational amplifiers. And we have started then applications of operational amplifiers, that is OPAM. So what are different applications of OPAMs? We have started with the OPAM as an inverting amplifier. Okay, so this is a configuration which is most probably used with the OPAMs, that is an inverting amplifier. So what is the special feature about this amplifier is that ki whatever input you are going to give to this amplifier, it will give a 180 degrees phase shift to your o input signal and at the output you will get an inverted signal. Okay, so this is how the inverting amplifier work. We have already seen the uh, diagram of this, the circuit diagram of inverting amplifier we have already seen, but uh, one more time we are going to see this because this is required for or whenever we are using OPAMP as a subtractor. Okay, so this is how we use operational amplifier as an inverting amplifier. In this design, you can see that the input is applied at the inverting end and it is given through an in, uh, input resistance that is R1. And at the feedback, we have connected R2, which is also called as a feedback resistor. Okay, so this signal at the output is feeded back to the input and you will get what at the output is an inverted input signal and with the amplified one. So this is how the input and output look for an inverting amplifier. So the, these things are very clear to you. Now we have also seen the derivation, the formula for what uh, we use inverting amplifier. So the gain of an inverting amplifier is denoted as minus of RF by R1. This is the gain of an amplifier and output voltage can be gain multiplied with the input. So how we will have the output is uh, in inverting amplifier is you will have output as gain into V in whatever input we are having multiplied with the gain you will have the output. Now the second configuration of OPAMP is non inverting amplifier. We are we are seeing inverting and ampli uh, inverting and non inverting once again because we can design an adder by using an inverting amplifier also and by using a non inverting amplifier also. Okay, these two configurations we will use to design the adder or the subtractor. Okay. So you can have a op-amp as a uh, subtractor by using non-inverting amplifier or by using an inverting amplifier. Only the output voltages will be different. So this is how we have derived the formula for uh, non-inverting amplifier that is also defined as gain multiplied with the in, uh, input. So what we have at the input is multiplied with the gain Ayush Katre. Are you there? Okay, so this is the diagram or this is the circuit diagram for a non-inverting amplifier. 
here we have connected the signal at the non inverting end that's why it is a non inverting amplifier and at the output we have connected a feedback resistor which is feeding back the signal to input at the inverting end so this is how the design of non inverting amplifier the signals will look like this it is without any phase shift that zero degree phase shift is there in non inverting amplifiers now after seeing these two configurations we have designed adder what is an adder what is an adder when you add two things you will have a addition so in adder uh, designing circuit also we'll add two signals to have a final added output uh, at the end so what is the adder circuitry it can be with the uh, with inverting uh, and with non inverting amplifier so you can call two types of adder that is inverting adder and non inverting adder we'll see the designing of this this is what the adder look likes we have three inputs v in 1 v in 2 and v in 3 okay we have given it to the inverting end that's why it is a inverting adder okay so with these three resistors we have given the signal to the inverting uh, input and at the output we have connected a feedback resistor also which is feeding back the output to the inputs and we have grounded the non inverting end okay so this is how the construction of adder looks like these are the three different currents flowing from three ends or from three different inputs that is in one uh, i1 i2 and i3 so what is the final current it will be ib2 at this end and if that is feedback current at this end and what we have we have two terminals also that is terminal a and terminal b so uh, ib1 is the current at terminal b so what we will do to have a adder is we will apply kcl that is kirchhoff's voltage law at the point a so what we will have sorry we will apply kcl that is kirchhoff's current law because we are having the currents at three different currents we are having at the three uh, at the node so we are going to apply kcl that is kirchhoff's current law i1 i2 i3 is equal to ib2 plus if that is the feedback resistance this is the um, sorry feedback current and this ib2 is the current at node b so the summation of all the currents will give you the final uh, current at point a after putting the values we will have Uh, I one, I two, I three is equal to I F. We will put values of I one, I two, and I three. These derivations we have seen in our last lecture. I am just repeating because we'll have to see the subtractor. So this is how the addition is there. What is the final equation? We are going to see here that the final equation V out is equal to minus of V one plus V two plus V three in bracket. okay so this is how how we got this equation by putting the values of i1 i2 and i3 in above equation we'll get this value and if we'll have rf as uh, rf and see here what is the condition here the condition is if we'll have rf is equal to r in 1 this condition okay if we'll have rf is equal to if all the three resistors or all the four resistors they are of same value what we will have at the output we will have minus of why this minus is there because this is uh, nothing but a inverting adder so by the formula we'll got a minus sign over uh, over here and at the output we'll have a 180 degree phase shift of the input signal okay so this is how the addition is done in uh, inverting amplifier now we'll see how the non inverting amplifier uh, adder works so in non inverting adder what is the difference here we are going to see in the 
circuit diagram here we have applied the two voltages two different voltages which is to be added at the non inverting end okay that's why it is called as a non inverting adder and at the inverting end the circuit is same the feedback resistor is there input resistor is there and at the output we are going to measure the voltage v out so what is the formula what is the formula for this the same formula what we have used just put the values of i1 i2 i3 uh, not i3 is not there put the values of i1 i2 and if over here in this uh, equation so you will get a addition of two voltages v1 and v2 now we'll come to our main topic that is opamp as the subtractor how we are going to have a subtractor by using a operational amplifier this so this is the designing you just look at the circuit diagram properly uh, i'll just wish you all the best that uh, after the wali vacations we are expecting our colleges to be opened so we will be able to perform these things in our practical lab so whenever you are going to do these things practically you are going to know actually what happens with the operational amplifiers and how the addition how the uh, subtraction is done how the inverting amplifier works and how the non inverting amplifier works these are very interesting things so for by the time you just remember the circuit that this is a op amp as a subtractor this different amplifier will it is also called as a different amplifier because we'll have to take the difference of two signals when we are subtracting the things or we are subtracting the voltages okay so v2 and v1 are the two different voltages which we are expected to be have a difference of them so how we have connected here one voltage is connected to this end through a feedback resistor it is connected to v2 and at the v1 we are having a voltage divider okay so here we are going to measure two different currents and then to uh, and then the difference at the output voltage so how is this circuit how this circuit will work what we are having these circuits as uh the different amplifier and subtractor circuits are used to obtain the subtraction of two different volt two input voltages now this these inputs can be anything these can be positive uh, voltage this can be a negative voltage or it can be a negative it can be a positive you can take a you can take a group of this okay whenever we are doing practical so these things will be very clear to you okay how will uh, we are going to have the differences so here output voltages we are uh, we are expecting to have v out as gain multiplied with va voltage at point a now what is vo1 this will be written as 1 plus because it is a inverting amplifier so we'll take 1 plus rf by r1 into rf rf plus r1 multiplied with v1 so what we will have we'll arrange this equation and what will have the output is is equal to rf by r1 into v1 this is v out 1 now what is the v out that is the output voltage here we will have rf by r1 this is the gain of the amplifier and at the output we will have v1 minus v2 this is how we will have the subtraction of two voltages now here we have written v1 minus v2 but you can have a negative v1 you can have a negative v2 so what we are going to do there the addition will be there okay so please uh, try to understand the things these are very interesting things in operational amplifiers and the first param uh, uh, voltage output voltage the equation for output voltage is very clear to us that v1 minus v2 will get at the output voltage and if we'll have rf is equal to r1 that is if the resistance values of all the 
connected resistors are same then what we will have at the output v out will be equal to v1 minus v2 so this is how the subtraction is done and this is the final uh, circuit for the op amp as a subtractor is it uh, is it clear to you here we are having two nodes a nodes a and node b so we can have the output voltage of the different amplifier will be given as rf by r1 into v1 minus v2 if we'll have r1 is equal to rf we'll have v out is equal to v1 minus v2 so this is how the subtraction is done and this is the final circuit of your op amp as a subtractor you can change the values of resistor if you will uh, not put rf is equal to r or uh, if these resistors are different you will have a different output voltage each and every time you will have to calculate the output voltage by keeping the values of rf and r okay so this is how the op amp as a subtractor works and i wish you all the best that uh, soon we will having our uh, lab practicals So this is all for today's class. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box or you can WhatsApp me. Okay.